You don't need dies, you don't need to draw, you just need paper, scissors and glue. Today we're making fantastic paper flowers. I changed my technique and this is the result. So I made this one that looks like a sunflower. Look at all the beautiful texture in the petals. I added a little bit of paint and I splatted it and added it to a card. I made this one with a button in the middle. It has layers in different sizes. I made this one that I added to a journal card with a beautiful patterned paper and a black piece of felt in the middle. And I made this one out of book pages and it has sequins in the middle. They're made from pretty much any type of paper. And in fact, cheap, thin paper works really well. I used book pages, so a dictionary page or a page from a textbook. I used up some of that not so pretty scrapbook paper. They're great for adding to all sorts of other pieces of ephemera. You could put one of these on the front of a journal, so you could make a focal point, pick up one of these and maybe add it like that, or you could use them on the front of some handmade envelopes. So how beautiful to just pick out the colours and add a little piece of something extra like that. There are four key reasons why I think these are a great project to make today, not least of which is they're really cheap to make. They don't need dies, they add dimension, they're fun, they have texture and you get to use all of those itty bitty decorative pieces like sequins and felt, like a washer, like a button. Use up your supplies and make gorgeous flowers. I'm going to start by making a basic flower with this new technique. So the technique that I use to make this sunflower and really you're going to get some fabulous texture with all of these petals. But I'm also going to give you some options so that you can vary your designs and use the supplies that you have. So I'll show you how to make use of different decorative elements like the ones I've got on my desk here. So as you can see I've got, oh just, I've got some fabric paint here, I've got some little metal washers, I've got all of those little itty bitty things that you don't know what to do with, I've got some sticky felt here, I've been using all of these to decorate the flowers. I've got some sequins, some fabric, here's some other coloured sequins and of course I've got my, my paper over here. And I've been varying the flowers by playing with all of these different elements and it just means you create things that are different, you create things that are beautiful and you use up some of those supplies. And to make things easy, of course what I've done is put the key process steps down on a piece of paper and these will go in Pinterest along with about 30 others. So choose the papers for your flowers and just tear them down to size. I wanted to make a point about the type of paper that I've been using. So for this sunflower, I grabbed some of this pretty ugly yellow scrapbook paper that I've had in my stash for some time. This is a superb opportunity for using up some of that ugly paper. What I need to do for a flower of this size, which is relatively large, is begin with some pieces that are about four inches square. So just to be clear, I've torn these down four inches in either direction and that means they are 10 centimetres square. So I've torn these down just for speed, but I would do it with book pages, I would do it with this beautiful cornflower blue and that would make this flower. And I'm going to do the folding, so let's come up close and personal. For each of the flowers, we need to create three layers. So I need three pieces of paper. Let me take the first one and show you exactly what to do. Turn it over and fold it over. And we're going to be as neat as we can. Although you might notice that I've torn these down. I didn't even cut them with a trimmer and that's absolutely fine. I've got a bone folder and as we go through at each stage, 
do the work, do the homework, make your creases really sharp and that will make it easier to make the next fold. Take the bottom right hand corner and bring it up to the left hand side and we want to point at about a third of the way down. So we're going to do it by eye, I'm not going to measure. Take this corner and fold it so that the tip, that corner, is touching that left hand vertical edge and press it down. Take your bone folder and just make the crease really tight. I'll do two of these so if you don't quite get it on the first run don't worry. I'm going to do a fold from this side again so I'll just move it round to make it a bit easier for me. I'm going to pick up this side and fold it over to sit on top of that corner that we just positioned on the left. So bringing that up and making another crease so that I've got two edges sitting on top of each other. I will show you. Take your bone folder and make the crease. So let me just show you what I did. I took this bottom right hand pokey corner here and I brought it up so that this cone shape is sitting on top of the edge here like that. I'm going to turn this over like that. I'm going to take this bottom right hand corner and fold it over and each time I'm keeping this corner here, this point, intact and I end up with something that I can do some cutting with. So let's do the cutting and then we'll just do one more. Take your scissors and for a large flower like this I want to create lots of petals. So I'm going to create three petals by cutting into here and with practice you will find that your petals become whatever sort of design and shape you want. So I'm starting with, I'm not drawing, I'm just taking my scissors and I'm going to cut and I don't go any further with my cut than the top edge of the top piece of paper, the fold on this little item. I'm thinking about the sunflower so I'm going to cut a bit deeper into that cone shaped piece that we've created and that just gives me some of that texture, some of those petals that we can curl up in a minute. One, two, being very careful and then my third petal come round and I'm just going to take a tiny bit off the side and that comes away. I have a little box to put these in because they go everywhere. I'm going to open this up and we've got quite a lot of petals here with not a lot of work and I chose a piece of paper with some pretty markings on and I think that's really really beautiful. I think if we can show those that would be great and if you want to at this stage you can add just a little bit more depth to some of those cuts. If you feel that you haven't gone deep enough and you want your petals to curl up, just go in with your scissors and make your petals a bit deeper. This is the basis of a five petal flower that I made some time ago on my channel. And what I've done is just create some variation to that method, that technique, and it gives me something quite different. So. Let's set that aside and just do one more. I'm sure you can do it. So we start with our piece of paper and I like to fold so that the blank side gets hidden. I just prefer it that way. It doesn't actually matter, your flower will look the same. Fold it over and crease that out. We're going to take this bottom right hand corner and move it over to the left hand side about a third of the way down. So bring that over, point your corner and touch the left hand side, press it down and you'll need something, you can use the back of your scissors, press that down really neatly and we're going to do a second fold bringing this over so that this side 
is flush with this. Let's just do that. I'm going to rotate a little bit just to make it easy for me to fold. And we're rotating round through this little corner here. Bring that over, flatten it. If you make a few of these, you will need something to press your creases down with. Save your fingers. Turn it over. And we're going to bring this corner here over to finish making our little cone shape. Let's make that nice and flat. And then we're going to do three little petals. So I start a little bit way down this side with my cut so that I've got space to go up. Come round. If you come round smoothly with your scissors, take your time, you get a smoother petal edge which is a little bit prettier than getting square corners on your petals, although it doesn't really matter. Making my second petal. So we're starting with a four inch or 10 centimetre square and we're making three petals in this and that gives us lots of lovely texture and a delicate element, I think, to that flower and something that we can turn into a sunflower on a journal card or a tag or the front of a journal. Open that up. And I think I've actually made one of these. So I'm going to show you what I do to bring them together. Isn't that pretty? And still quite large, quite a significant element. With the one I made before, you can see that it's got curl to the petals. So I'm going to add that. And just to say, these papers are clearly a bit different. They're a little bit paler, but the principles are exactly the same. So I'm going to take each of these and what I do is I put them in the palm of my hand, get my knuckle and just give them a little bit of love and affection just to get the centre to curl up a bit. I can do that with all three. And in a minute I will show you the variations so that you can just ring the changes and make these flowers in whatever size and variety you like. So they're curling up a bit but I want the petals to have much more of a curl at the edges because I think that's interesting. If you wanted to post something you might not want to do quite so much of a curl. I'm just taking the edge of the bone folder and quite gently going round. I don't want to rip any of those petals off. You can see you get this nice little bowl effect. It doesn't take long. And you can also see, I hope, each of these layers is just a little bit different. I've never had a layer that looks exactly the same. Sometimes the petals feel a bit longer because I've cut more deeply into that little triangle. I like the lettering that might go on the, on the front, on the top. Or if you go less deep, you'll have just the rounded petal at the end, but not so much to, to curl. So it's up to you what you want it to look like. So those are the basic layers. Let's glue them together. And for glue, I think I'll use a stick. I don't want them to, I suppose, suffer from the wet of a very liquid PVA. I'm going to choose that one as the top. No, I'm not. I'm going to choose that one as the top. I like the diagonal lines. Just put a bit of glue in the middle. Doesn't matter which way we do this. And I know I'm losing some of the, the words, but actually when these get on a journal card. If you just see a tiny bit of the text behind, it's exciting, isn't it? You can just see the secrets in the layers of the beautiful papers. So a fair bit of glue in the middle, not all the way to the edge, and layer them up. And if I was doing this with a book page and then a different type of paper, I would be just a little bit more careful about where I positioned each of these particularly if I could see between the petals and I wanted to see something behind. I'll show you that in an example in a second. So that would give me the basic flower. Let me add a centre. Let's just pick one. So I've been adding, this is just black felt with a bit of sticky on the back. You could use any sort of paper. In fact, I'll show you with paper as well. So I just cut a circle and for some of my flowers I've been adding this so I could add that in the middle. I think I'll show you with paper as well. So 
why don't I use one of my cutouts? I think that would work well. And show you what I did to just take that sunflower to the next level to just make it a little bit more interesting. In fact, I'm going to put it that way around so the words are across. So on this one, what I did, you can see just a little bit of depth of colour here. I just took a few of my pens. These are water brush pens. You could use paint, you could use anything. And I went round and coloured in. I think I was drying out a bit, let me just add a bit of water. I just went round a few times and I used some different colours and added some depth. I'm not particularly accurate. I go over the middle to bring the colour in. Like I say, you could do this with paint as well and I just did a bit of flicking as well so it starts to come together when you add some of this so you can get a bit arty I played with lots of different colours let me bring a bit of water in I think I need a new set of brush pens so just flicked out I think if you use a few different colours that works really really well maybe a bit of yellow and in the centre, let me find a pen. I took a gel pen and I just scribbled quite a few circles. It's going round and round. So I think you get the feel of it. Maybe add a bit more of that lovely orange. Go as deep as you like. And on this one you can see that what I've also done is splatted with gold and white. I'm going to be naughty and do it at my desk. So that's a super quick one, possibly I could add some magic gold. And that gives me a beautiful flower to add to a journal card. So I said I'd give you some options for making these faster and more cheaply. And I've got an example here, which is probably the best way to show you. So you can make the layers behind have fewer detailed petals. You can also only add two layers if you want to, which is what I've done here. So let me try and pick another example. So where I've got this larger flower, the back piece here, which is the third element at the back, has got fewer petals. So I've done fewer cuts and that makes it faster to do. And obviously I've rung the changes and I've made the last one be a bit bigger so I'm making things a little bit different. So on this one I've got more petals at the front where you see the detail and then again I've got wider petals at the back and I really like that variety. So let me just show you how to do it with just the two cuts rather than the three that we did with these detailed petaled layers and I would say that this is possibly a better approach if you're going for smaller pieces of paper to begin with. So this is a flower that I think works really well, but it is smaller and I started with a three inch square piece of paper. So I'll fold that in half and I'll show you how to do the two petal cut. So nothing's different so far. The folds are the same. Take the bottom right hand corner and fold it up to the top. Crease that down. So you can see already you know, it's quite a small element that we're dealing with. Let me bring that over, just as before, rotate around this tip here and flatten it down. Turn it over and this flappy bit here that's spare, we're going to fold that up and make it flush with the folds we'd already made. So we've got something really quite tiny. Take your scissors and rather than making 
three petal cuts. I'll do exactly the same, start at the side, try to be smooth on my cut and I'm aiming as I turn that corner to have a bit of a cut in the middle of my cone down the centre. I bring my scissors back to the top and then I go round again and take a little bit off the side. And this will give me still plenty of petals, but it's faster. So if you're doing larger volume and you want to build up the layers, you might want to just do the two petal cut like that. So we still have plenty on that one, don't we? And of course, what you can do is just do a one petal cut as well. So then you get those really broad petals at the back, really rounded. This is a piece of dictionary paper. Fold it over. We're getting used to it now, aren't we? Bring that up to the left hand side, make it nice and flat, fold up again and then turn it over, bring the pointy bit over to the side so we've got our nice ice cream cone. And the single petal is what I did a long time ago in a video. Take my scissors and literally just create a rounded corner, round it off bring it down a little bit along the side so that you do get the shape of a petal. And even that is fabulous, there we go, for building up the layers. So I could have that at the back, or maybe one of these at the back, bit of variety, and maybe that one there. And then I could add on top that little bit of felt. So shall we just stick that together and we see what we get? One, I like this cornflower blue. It really is a good feeling to make use of some of those papers that sit there and they're not necessarily great if you want to do some of your journals but they look fabulous as an element that's a bit of extra on the top of some of our journal cards and tags and envelopes. How pretty is that and how quick. So for inspiration I have the examples, the sunflower with the splats, I have the upright journal card with felt, beautiful brown colours, just two layers. Isn't that pretty? I have one on its side and one that I did with a fun little bobble. Just a bit of sparkle. Really, really pretty. If you've enjoyed this video, then check out my playlist, which is absolutely full of tutorials making ephemera. I make pockets, tags, envelopes, snippets and journal cards. I really, really hope to see you soon.